And we are live. Welcome to the latest Danger and Play podcast. Today we're going to talk about how I lost 80 pounds of fat without using steroids, clenbuterol, or any other drugs. But much more than that, we're going to talk about habits, how you can form good habits, how you can break bad habits, how you can lose fat even if you don't need to lose 80 pounds of fat, and much, much more. Now, some of you might be saying, did you really lose 80 pounds of fat? Are you like an internet marketer? Are you posting fake pictures, photoshopping? And and the answer is no. I mean, you can look at my site. I have a picture of me up when I was 260 pounds, and that was a legit 260 pounds. And then I posted a picture of me at 180 pounds. So that's 80 pounds of total body weight loss. It might actually have been 90 pounds of fat. I gained 10 pounds of muscle. You know, maybe I lost a little muscle along with the fat. Maybe it's not technically 80 pounds of fat, but but whatever, man. That's a quibble. I do know this. I had got injured and I couldn't train. I had some really horrible things happen in my personal life. So all I did was basically eat, man. I don't know if you would say that I self-medicated with food. It was just that I was depressed and life had fucked me up, man. Kicked kicked me. I was on the ground and I I couldn't lift. So I, I like to eat a lot. I couldn't train because of injuries. Life kind of sucked, so I just ate, and over the course of a couple years, I ballooned up enough that I have stretch marks on uh, my stomach, and that even when I get lean, I still have a little bit of loose skin. Bottom line, it was 80 pounds of fat, so how did I drop it? Well, I mean, let's talk a little bit about habits. Let's talk a little bit about how you can stop the bad habits. Now, you don't gain 80 pounds of fat or 20 pounds of fat You don't get bad credit. You don't become broke. You don't get bad grades in school. You don't lose your job. You don't fuck up your personal life overnight. You do it because you have um, bad habits form. And my bad habit was just I just ate whatever I wanted. It wasn't like I was binging all the time, but I would wake up and I would have – I'd go to the coffee bean and I would have (laughs) – I'm laughing, but I would have a um, a lemon poppy seed muffin and have like a little bit of frosting on top and then have a large iced coffee. And that was that was my breakfast. Lunch, um, there's a place it's like it wasn't Chipotle, but it was one of the La Salsa maybe it's called, but I'd go in for like a big burrito, some chips, salsa, and that'd be my lunch. And then for dinner, I don't know, pasta and gnocchi, maybe tacos. Maybe I'd make chicken nachos, whatever. A, a, I'd have a big meal. So throughout the course of a day, I'd probably eat 4,000 calories. When, when I started to, to look back, the poppy seed muffin had 600 calories. Those burritos, you think you're eating a burrito, but those are like 1,500 calories once you add guacamole, a little bit of sour cream, a few chips. That's a 1,500-calorie lunch. That's huge. And then dinner, 1,500 or 2,000 calories. Throw in like a random dessert, maybe have ice cream sundaes that night, and and suddenly you're looking at like a lot of weight. And although I gained my weight fast, most people, they gain their weight slowly. And that's because rather than maybe eating 1,000 calories too much over the day, you eat a couple hundred calories too much over the day. Well, what's 200 calories a day? That's 1,400 calories a week. You're looking at a pound of fat a month, and if you look at how people gain weight, past 30 people tend to gain 5 to 10 pounds a month, and it's a slow creep. And that's just because you form bad habits. Habit is just it's just a routine. You get in the routine of, well, I'm going to get up, and I'm going to get coffee, I'm going to get bagel, I'm going to cr- get cream cheese on it. You don't think, well, you know, the cream cheese adds 120 calories, and, and the bagel is 380 calories, and that's all fat with carbohydrates, and that secretes an insulin response, which encourages your body to store fat. You just get up and you do it. It's not a thoughtful process. You're not in a high level of consciousness. You're not actually observing what you're doing. You're just doing it. And and that's essentially what a bad habit is. Some bad habits are more like an addiction. You know, you smoke cigarettes, you shoot heroin, you drink too much. Maybe you probably do that because you're you're an addict. It isn't just a mindless thing. It's something that you're you're saying, "Man, I, I wish I wouldn't smoke this cigarette. I know it's really bad." Addiction we can talk about some other time, but we're just talking about habit. That mindless, low consciousness, bug type thinking that leads to all these troubles. So here's how you, you change your habits if you want to lose weight. And this is what I did to um, lose my first like 20 or 30 pounds. So I had 80 pounds to lose. I didn't think of it in terms of like I had 80 pounds to lose. Like a lot of people who are too fat, I thought oh, I lose 40 pounds and I look great. But as we have a really hard time estimating how much different you're going to look with fat. If you think you need to lose 20 pounds, you probably need to lose 40 pounds. If you think you need to lose 40 pounds, you probably need to lose 60 to 80 pounds. That's based on my experience, my experience working with other people. It sucks, but it's the truth. 
All right, so here's what I did. Here's how I changed my habit. This got me down to 20 or 30 pounds. I just stopped gaining weight. That's the first step. Change your habit so you're no longer gaining weight. Some people say, well, no, I want to lose weight. I'm going to completely overhaul my life. I'm going to start packing meals. And No, you're not, man. You're, you're 95% of people who go on diets fail, and that's because you look at things as being as a diet and not a lifestyle. No, 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 no. You're just going to change your habits, and you do these one at a time. You do them incrementally, and then these snowball. So what do you do? Eat the same food you always eat. I would eat my lemon poppy seed muffin, and I took, you know, muffin has a bottom part and a top part, and the top part had frosting. I just ripped off half of the top part. That's probably 150 calories. I still ate the same thing I ate. I ate same garbage food. I just ripped ripped a little bit of the frosting part off. Lunch, same thing. If I went to, like, the Mexican bar, instead of getting the burrito enchilada style with chips, I would just get my burrito with chips, and I would take some chips, I'd throw them away, and I would cut off, like, one-fifth of the burrito, and I would just throw it away. Eating the same food, you're just changing the habit now. Same thing for dinner. Get the same dinners you always get. Take part of the food, throw it away. So what are you doing, what are you doing now? Now you're not gaining weight. You've stopped. You've switched momentum. So instead of gaining weight every week, you're not gaining any weight. Then you can start working on losing weight. Maybe you eat the same foods, but you change one meal a day. So I would still eat my muffin in the morning. I would still eat my shitty lunch dinner i would just have a smaller healthier dinner then i just transitioned into healthier bodybuilding style training or bodybuilding style eating you know you eat your chicken breast and your rice throw on some salsa and again now you've changed another habit so now you're now you're losing weight now you're losing a pound a week well a lot of people are going to say well i don't want to lose a pound a week i got 40 pounds to lose and i'm going to lose it in eight weeks and you know what i'm not selling you anything i could do an ebook how i lost 80 pounds of fat without drugs and how you can do it too and buy, buy my special dieting service, but that's not really the type of shit I'm on. You know, I'm, I'm realistic and I'm, I'm worried about how you can have long-term success and achieve long-term long -term success. And I'm not just selling you fucking garbage. So at, when you change your habit and how I changed my habit was you don't move on to the next phase until you've changed your bad habit. So don't think I'm going to lose a pound a week until you've stopped gaining weight. You say, okay, I'm... It's been, they say you have it, takes 21 days to form, maybe 28 days. Some people say 14 days. Research generally says 21 to 28 days. For some, it's shorter. For some, it's longer. But the point is, don't try to move on until you've actually accomplished the first phase, which is to stop gaining weight. Once you've stopped gaining weight, then you move on to phase two. That's when you start cutting out the junk. Then you move to phase three. That's when you start improving your diet. So I would say that I lost my first 40 pounds of 80 pounds of fat simply by, one, changing my habits so that instead of gaining weight, I stopped gaining weight. And I stopped gaining weight by eating the same foods I always ate. I would just throw away part of the food. I would also eat out of smaller dishes. There was This was covered in the book, I think, Switch, How to Make Big Changes in Your Life by Making Small Changes. And... They did a study on popcorn, and with they, what they did is they had people go into the movie theaters, and they handed everybody a bowl of popcorn. The popcorn was designed to be bland, not flavorful, not good popcorn. They gave them small, mediums, and larges. And what they found out was if you give somebody a large container, they're going to eat more food. You give them a small container, they're going to eat less food. It's because of how our body processes and, and perceives um, food. So put something in a huge dish and it looks like less food. Put that same amount of food in a small dish, and it seems like it's more food. So you just, you just, that's one little thing you can do. Get small spoons, get small dishes, and all of a sudden you're changing your habit. Also, if you're gonna eat seconds or thirds, you have to get up and actually refill, <laughs> refill your container. See how simple that is? You can do that, and you can lose 40 pounds of fat, 50 pounds of fat, let's say you have 20 pounds of fat, you can use that to lose 20 pounds, 10 pounds. It's not hard. It doesn't require a ton of willpower. It doesn't require a lot of thought. It's just really tiny, minor tweaks. Making tiny, minor tweaks is the key to success in any life. Um, what if you're behind on your bills? Well, if you read the Dave Ramsey Financial Handbook or whatever it's called, 
he, he says something to do that a lot of economists and a lot of Wall Street guys and a lot of people who think about economics, what they quote-unquote rationally would say, is, is wrong advice. He would say, well, if you have three bills and three credit cards, one has a $1,000 limit, or you owe 1000 on one, you owe 5000 on one, you owe 10000 on one, and the interest rate is higher on the 10000 and lower on the 1000 if you ask anybody, they'll say, no, 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 you got to pay the 10000 off first because that is the highest interest rate. That is absolutely true from a cold, calculating, Warren Buffett, economic-style thinking. But guess what? That doesn't work. That's not how humans behave. That's not how good habits are formed. Instead, he would say, and, and he's right, pay off the 1000 because now you're creating momentum. You're in the habit of, okay, I got a bill. I got a, a debt. I'm going to pay it off. And you pay that 1000 off and you feel like, fuck it, this feels good. I'm, I'm in a good habit. I'm in a, I'm in a routine now. So instead of my habits being I'm putting things on my credit card, I'm mindlessly spending – you're in the routine that, like, I'm not a spender anymore. I am a saver. I am somebody who pays off my debt. So what's happening is internally your self-image is changing. Your view of yourself is changing. Instead of viewing yourself as somebody who puts things on a credit card, you view yourself as somebody who pays off his credit cards and who doesn't have debt. And that's so powerful that even though you may pay more interest in the long run because you're not paying off the highest interest ones first – you get out of debt. You get out of debt actually quicker. So that's an, an example of instead of viewing yourself as a wholly rational person, we're actually not rational. Dana really has a good talk. Um, he wrote predictably, predictably irrational. He wrote another book. I forgot, and I read them both. And all the research shows that we're, we're just we're not that rational. So so much about life and so much about habits are recognizing that you're not a rational human being, and that you have to find these little tweaks or these little hacks that allow you to tap into your irrationality and then to use those irrational behaviors to achieve success. So as you can see, or as you can hear as the case may be, paying off your debt is the same thing as losing weight. It's the same thing as building healthy friendships. It's the same thing as getting, in, getting ahead in your career. You find ways to tap into your human irrationality. You find ways to change your habits. You find ways to make incremental changes and the reason that this isn't appealing to people intuitively is, is because something else that we do that's irrational and you have to recognize as irrationality is that we have like a short timeline and that's due to our evolutionary nature. You know, our DNA just wants us to replicate and die, you reproduce and die. So all of our timelines are very short. We think, well, I, I got to have success today. I got to, I got to lose, I got to lose my fat today. I got to get out of my debt today. I got to you know, hook up with 50 checks this year. I got to do it now. Well, that, that that's irrational, right? But when you think of it, when you let that irrationality rule you, that's when you go on like fad diets. That's when you say, okay, I'm going to go buy the 30-day or 32-hour juice fast. And um, here's an interesting little side note. So I was talking to an internet marketer friend, and she was building a website for my friend. She asked me if I wanted to like have her build my website and consult with me and the reason I don't really do internet marketing is because, I don't know, I don't really want to deal with low consciousness people. I would rather have less money and deal with high consciousness people than deal with bugs and low consciousness people. In any event, what I learned from her was that if you want to sell diets to people, the shorter diets always outperform the higher diets, and it's like exponential. So if, say I have Welcome to Danger and Play Coaching, and I say, 72 hour diet makeover and then I have a one week diet makeover a one month diet makeover three weeks and six months nobody's gonna buy, nobody's gonna buy the six months everybody's gonna buy the 72 hour one and that's and a few people will buy the, the one week one fewer still will buy the, the one month month the, th the three months and the six months are gonna sell that's ridiculous right if you're on a diet or if you wanted coaching with me or coaching with Jay 72 hours isn't going to fucking do anything, you know? Oh, you're, what, what are we going to do in 72 hours? What are you doing in a week? You have to think in like a year, five years, 10 years. It takes fuck it, it takes years to get to a place that is awesome. But that's not how most people think. And that's just because, we're, and we're all low consciousness. And, and it's not that I'm insulting everyone or insulting you by saying you're low consciousness. We all start off as low consciousness. We all, we're bugs. We think I need a quick solution Give me anabolic steroids, even though I've only been in the gym for a couple months. Give me a bunch of protein powder, and I'm just going to have success overnight. 
And that's how we all start off. And, and part about becoming a higher consciousness being is recognizing that we're irrational, we're bugs, we, we don't think at high levels, and that we have to find ways to tap into our bug nature. And that's what predictably, predictably irrational is about. That's what I'm about. That's what my dieting approach is about. Is just say, hey man, I'm a bug, dude. I'm a bug who eat. <laughs> I'm a bug who eats a lemon poppy seed muffin for breakfast, dude. Like, what kind of person eats a lemon poppy seed muffin for breakfast, right? Well, that was me. However many years ago that was. That was I was a bug, dude. I don't have any problem saying that. So if I say you're a bug, whatever, dude. I'm not insulting you. You're just the same place that I was five years ago, and that's fine. We can work together and, and overcome our bug natures. And I was who eats freaking enchilada style burritos for lunch it's disgusting you know it's destructive on your body it's pro-inflammatory forget about if you're losing fat that it's just not good for your body it's what i did so let's just say we're bugs right we're bugs and we have bad habits so we'll just you be we'll be a bug still i'll eat a lemon poppy seed muffin but i'll tear some of the frosting off then i'll tear the whole frosting off and just eat like the bottom part and now suddenly it's like yeah it's not as good anymore what do i even want to eat a lemon poppy seed muffin no i'll just eat a um, protein shake, right? And I'll have like a sweet protein shake or maybe I'll throw some peanut butter into it or some almond milk and it'll it'll taste good. So that was phase one, changed habits, lost 40 pounds. Phase two was I started doing intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is like super popular now and I don't want to be that guy or the hipster. I was doing intermittent fasting before everyone else was. But I was doing intermittent fasting before anybody had a blog on it or before it was big. And I just stumbled upon it accidentally. I'd always been a member of the Life Extension Foundation. And there had been a lot of research about calorie restriction and how calorie restriction expanded life, um, lifespans and health markers. And then I read into it and you look at everybody who does – I'm sorry. You look at everybody who does calorie restriction and <laughs> they look terrible, dude. Google New York Times article calorie restriction. They they say, they claim they're healthy, but they're emaciated. Um, one guy was six foot, one hundred thirty five pounds, looked like he'd snap in two. And I was like, well, I'm obviously not going to do calorie restriction because I, I don't want to look like those people. But then there was some other research that came out and said, well, you can get a lot of the benefits of calorie restriction if you do intermittent fasting, which was defined as a sixteen hour fast. Intermittent fasting appealed to me because I like to eat a lot. I remember talking to one guy. Actually, he was from the forum, and he said, Hey, I've read about intermittent fasting. This was relatively recently. Said He said, I love it. I read about intermittent fasting. I'm thinking about trying it. I looked at him, and I said, I can tell by looking at you that you have a problem getting enough calories in. He said, Well, how can you tell? And I said, Well, because you know, you're kind of a skinnier guy. I said, If intermittent fasting doesn't work for you because you're not the kind of guy who's going to sit down to a 1,500-calorie meal and think this is awesome. He said, oh, yeah, maybe so. And then I read on the forum like a month later. He said, oh, I did intermittent fasting. Didn't like it. You know, I didn't have any energy. And I was like, well, yeah, because you're not eating enough. But somebody like me, I'm a big eater. I I would love to sit down to a 4,000 calorie meal. If I could get away with it, I would eat five to 10,000 calories every day. That is not an exaggeration. You can talk to anyone who has seen me eat. And they all say the same thing. Oh, my God. How can you eat that much? You know, where does it all go? Uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I was like, man, intermittent, intermittent fasting sounds great. I won't eat for 16 hours. I'll only be actually hungry for a couple of those hours. And then when I eat, I can eat a lot of calories. When you do like the the five meals a day, six meals a day, seven meals a day, when I would eat that way, I would eat a meal and I'd feel good for like half an hour and then be hungry for two hours. And I look at my clock and then I eat my next meal. I'm fine for half. So I'm hungry for actually like 10 hours out of the day when I would do five meals a day, but for intermittent fasting, I'm, I'm only actually hungry for a, a couple hours out of the day. So for me, that was easy. Now, I'm not telling you to do intermittent fasting, but what I'm saying is if you're, if you're fat, chances are you like to eat. Chances are you like to eat big meals. Intermittent fasting is definitely something to think about because you can still eat bigger meals and you can still lose fat because you're going to get your 2,500 calories in or your 3,000 calories, whatever your body weight is. And you can get those in two or three meals out of the day. So you can have two or three big meals. You don't eat. You're only hungry for a couple hours. So much better than having a stopwatch beep. Oh, thank God it's been three hours. I can finally eat my next meal. So I did intermittent fasting, and that is how I lost the rest of my weight. 
and I lost the rest of my weight over the course of, I don't know, a year, year and a half. And intermittent fasting is the approach that I currently follow. I eat um, six to eight hours out of the day. I, do, I fast for 16. During the holidays, if I eat a really big meal, I know a really big meal is coming up, I won't eat for 24 to 36 hours. Uh, I was just in Vegas with um, friends, and we were partying and hanging out. We had huge meals, uh, you know, big steak, lots of bread and butter and desserts and everything else. I didn't eat for 36 hours after that, and when you don't eat for 36 hours after that, your body tends to get rid of all the excess crap, the edema, the, the water gain. You lose some of the fat, and it evens you out. A lot of you are going to be saying, okay, this is great. You talked about habits, how to change habits, how to form good ones, but I need a meal plan, bro. I, I, what did you eat for a day? I need a schema to follow. I need worksheets and everything else, and, and I would love to give that to you, but to be honest, I didn't really follow like a, a meal. I'm something of a night owl, so I would have my last meal at, say, like 11 or 12 at night. Wake up, you know, maybe take a long walk with the dog, play with the dog, do some cardio. Not eat anything until about 2.30 or 3. Then I would actually eat before I would train. Now, a lot of people, this is when intermittent fasting got big. Fasted training is like the rage now. If, if you follow quote-unquote real intermittent fasting, which I didn't follow because I didn't know it existed, they all say you got to train in a fasted state. If I train in a fasted state, my workouts are garbage. A lot of people say they have great workouts. Cool. Experiment on your own. Try it fasted for a week. Um, try it unfasted for a week. See how you feel. For me, fasted training isn't an option. So I would eat, um, you know, five to 800 calories an hour or two hours before training. Nothing too heavy. I wouldn't have steak or anything like that because it sits in your stomach. But maybe a big protein shake, a couple of scoops of protein with almond milk and almond butter or MCT oil. Um, go train. Just a typical whatever my workout was. I, I like dog crap training myself um, or HIT training. High, the HIT training is kind of a redundancy. It's high intensity training. Training doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's a lot like saying an ATM machine. Technically, it's ATM. But if you just say ATM, it sounds weird. You say ATM machine, right? Or what's your social security number? Well, SSN, right? But you always say, well, what's your SSN number? Anyhow, I would do HIT training or dog crap training. Then I'd eat a, a big meal. And I would love to say post-workout I only ate brown rice and chicken. But I would eat chicken nachos at like a Mexican place next door. Probably like 1,200 calories. And you can see in the pic of me at like 182, I was lean, dude. Like... I had some loose skin on my stomach, and I'll, I'll never have, like, a quote-unquote six-pack because I'll always have that loose skin unless I get plastic surgery, which I'm not going to do. And I was lean, and I would eat a huge meal, dude. I would eat pizza sometimes. And then after that, I would have another meal. My total calories for the day would be, on a training day, would be, like, 24 to 2,800. And I could stay really lean, eating essentially everything I wanted during that eight-hour window. When my eating would get a little bit out of control, I would do a 24 to 36 hour fast. And um, as, as a best practice, even if your diet is clean, fasting for 24 to 36 hours um, once or twice a month is actually good for you. It leads to clarity of thought. It lets your body expunge all the toxins. It lets you get rid of all the gunk in your intestines. And of course, some people say, well, you don't have you don't have gunk in your intestines, that's all mumbo jumbo. And I would say, well, fast for 36 hours and watch what comes out. Then you can tell me that you don't have gunk hanging out in your intestines. Basically, that that's a wrap, guys. I would love to sell you all a $39.99 ebook. And I could create a nifty little splash page with before and after pictures and testimonials and calls to action. But I don't know. I don't really think that's necessary. What I did was I followed an intermittent fasting approach that people who sell intermittent fasting ebooks would say is wrong. Whatever. It worked for me. You can look at the pictures and see that that was what I did and I, I lost weight. And anyone who knows anything about drugs could look at my pictures right away and say, well, he's not on anything. I'm in those pictures. And the, the approach works. And it works because first we change your habits, right? We change the momentum. Instead of gaining weight, you stop gaining weight. Step one. Step two, 
Change your habits so that you lose a little bit of weight. Step three, change your habits so you lose a little bit more weight. Step four, right, That maybe that's four months down the road. Now you're absolutely and completely in control of your life and you have good habits and then you tweak things appropriately. You don't have to do intermittent fasting. Um, my podcast co-host Jay, who is in way better shape than I am, um, does a completely different approach. We will talk to him about his approach and it's something entirely different. I'm just doing this solo because a lot of people said, well, hey, man, what did you do? So, again, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not saying this is the best thing to do. I am telling you this is how I lost 80 pounds without testosterone, HGH, clombuterol. Um, I'd probably use maybe thermogenic over-the-counter like VPX meltdown or something, but nothing too crazy. That's what I did. That's how I lost 80 pounds. If you have any questions... Post them in the comments below. If you want to hear us talk more about dieting, let us know. Thanks a lot, bros, and have a good day.